Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! It's tearing up my heart, chip chip baroo. But when we are apart, chip chip baroo. I think they should just end everything that rhymes with you with chip chip baroo. A hundred percent. And boy bands? That's I feel like why. there's a lot of you. Come on. It's a boy band episode. Woo woo. Yeah. Chip chip baroo, everyone. Here we are. We've made it to yet another Boz Burgers episode. And another Bob's Credits episode. And... Another Friday in our life. It's lunchtime. We are late to record. Skylar's going to get hungry by the end of this, so keep... <laughs> you can, If you listen carefully, you can maybe hear when it switches over. When my hangry yeah, takes over my yeah, personality. So, so pay attention out there, and you let us know when you hear it. Yes, the minute mark. Um, You know that trend... She's a 10, but blah, 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 blah. Yes. That's me. She's a 10, but her personality totally changes when she's hungry. I think you are a 10, but... She falls asleep to really, true crime. Really an 11. Oh. Yeah. See what I did there. Aww. <laughs> we don't have that much business to discuss. This time around. We don't. We no. don't. There's just the usual stuff that we'd like to like send people to. You know what I'm going to say here? What? We love some more reviews on op- Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Mainly it just, like, because we love reading them. We love reading them so much. There are so many heartfelt reviews and they make us feel all warm and fuzzy like a Bob's episode. And yeah, it takes a moment or two and it really helps us out as well. So... That would be lovely. That's all I'm going to say here. Um, is there anything you want to say? Anything business wise? Nope. Anything? Any direction you want to lead anyone down? I am so excited for Skylar's sides. Oh, okay. And I'm so ex- excited for a Boys for Now episode. I think we got to dive straight into the heart. I'm just going to say that Skylar and I were talking about potentially getting some uh, Boys for Now themed merchandise up on our shop. Uh,. Hell yes. Yeah. Bobscredits.com slash shop. Uh, it's not up there yet, but there's a lot of other good stuff up there. So check it out. Should we play a little Bob pun or Max pun? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Your first pun is the Channing Tater Burger. I love, I love tater tots. I just, I love tater tots so much. Oh, on a burger too. Mm. I was thinking about a breakfast burrito I made the other day with tater tots in it. You made that the other day? How did I miss no, that? No, the other day I was thinking about oh, a like burrito. One you made, I made like it years in, ago. Like once in your lifetime? <laughs> I'm, I had to go to a Galentine's Day. Yeah. yeah, once in my lifetime. I had to go to a Galentine Day party and you have to bring gifts for everyone. And I'm not like a crafty person. So I made hangover burritos for everyone and shoved tater tots in them. Oh, delicious. Yeah. I thought you were just like, there's this time in like 2003 where I made a... <laughs> tater tot breakfast burrito and i was thinking about that the other day i just love tater tots so much they're great anyway Um, channing tatum he's okay but um you yes your next pun is the last of the mohicama burger comes with jicama you bob oh your next pun is i've created a monster burger Which works on two levels, because the Munsters are monsters, too. And it's a cheese. Mm-hmm. Max. Bob. No. Do you know that you say I've created a monster frequently in your life? I do? Yeah. Not like every week, but it's definitely a phrase you... Uh, Who do I say that about? Biscuit, yourself, me. Oh. Yeah. I'd be more aware of that. Yeah. I have a catchphrase that I stole from, like, a Frankenstein movie. <laughs> And your final pun is the Plum and Plumber Burger. Max. Yes. Okay, so you got two. Whatever. Feels good? 
Feels okay. Okay. What is it time for, Max? Well, and you, don't mess it up. You've got to say it. You're already messing it up because I've got to respond to it. You've already messed it up. It was supposed to go before the burger puns. I've created a monster. <laughs> All right. Who is ready for Skylar Sides? The fun facts before the fun facts. Dish it, girl. Beautiful. That means I'm ready, by the way. Let me tell you, Max. I love you so much. It's scary. And for you, my fiance, the boo boo of my life. Oh, because all the slapping. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I have found a fun fact that is specifically for you. Now, do I think there'll be a huge lap over and other people will be able to enjoy it? Yes. What would you say if I told you that the TV show that you love, The Boys. Uh Uh-huh. Love The Boys. I know. Are huge fans of Bob's Burgers. Really? And How so? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Tell me. No, no, no. no. That's Um, a great question. Yeah. Before the movie, in order to support the Bob's Burger movie that was coming out, The Boys tweeted, we've waited for the Bob's Burgers movie longer than we're making you wait for season three. Now, that's not the fun part. With it, they created the boys' burger puns. Oh, my God. I'm so excited for this. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I think the boys is a fantastic show. Doesn't um, everybody watch it? Like, is it it's, popular? It's really popular, yes. Not um, like Stranger Things popular. No, no, no. But it's yeah. a different kind of taste, it's great. I feel like. But it's great. I think people who don't watch it don't realize what a good kind of like social commentary it is, what good like character work it has. And... Um, they think just think it's like a superhero show, and it's so much more than that. Yes, honestly, if you like Marvel stuff, you should definitely be watching it. All when I'm like in the room when Max is watching it, every scene I'm hooked. So if I'm hooked from afar, it, I know it's a good show. Let's yeah. be honest. Anyway, would you like to hear these the boys' burger puns? What if I said no? What would we do here? We'd of course, like I want to hear them. Come on, hit me with them. Okay, him. okay. I, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce all these right, so please correct me. I know this one, though. The A-Vocado Train. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. A-Train, one of the uh-huh. superheroes. The fucking Diabol Pickle Burger. Okay, Diabol Pickle. That must be a catchphrase, maybe? Fucking Diabolical. Fucking Diabolical, yeah. Okay. The Eurogasm Burger. Eurogasm, yes. Eurogasm is a big, uh, it's when all, it's this like big event where all these superheroes come together to have a giant uh, orgy. Y'all, it's a really good show. It's a character-based show. It It's really, really good. But sometimes I, I look up and I'm just like, what is going on? Well, it's the, be- <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to talk about it too much, but the beauty of it is that it like is also very funny and takes like stupid sex humor and fart humor and those that kind of humor and mixes it into this world and makes fun of superheroes and uh, it's, it's smart. It's, yeah, I yeah. think so. Okay, the Pepper Jack Quaid burger. Oh, we know Jack Quaid. Yes, Jack Quaid plays Huey on the show. Meg uh, Ryan and, and Dennis, Dennis Quaid's, Quaid's son. son. Yep. He's fantastic, by the He's way. Great. He was great in the new Scream too. Real talent. The Stan. Ed Grier Burger. Okay. Stan Edgar runs Vought International, which owns the superheroes. Okay. Owns their licensing and whatnot. Now, if you fall asleep to the word superhero, I now have another fun fact for you, if that put you to bed. Not you. I'm talking about the people listening. Who don't like superheroes. Yes. Okay. I always think that's the ice cream truck, but it's our laundry machine. Skylar's, yeah, our laundry machine has a light, nice little ditty when it's done, but Skylar's like always like halfway out the door. It's like, oh, that's right. Remember on the office when the glass door is broken in the dinner party? And it's because Michael heard the ice cream truck and ran through a glass window. That's me. Yeah, the best part about that is that there was restraint at the beginning. By Jan, it's clear, it's clear they yes. had to talk about it. Like, don't tell them why. Don't like, let's not discuss it. Because rude and mean. She doesn't tell the story until she's really pissed off at him later that day. So it's just so funny that when you think about that, they had that conversation beforehand. Yes. Okay, so one of the notes that Bob's Burgers got from the studio in the early days 
was this family loves each other too much. <laughs> right? Yeah. I love when a studio note is so wrong. The reason people love this show, part a huge part of it, is because they love each other and the conflict and the antagonists come from outside. Yeah, and we've seen enough of just like families like being mean and hating each other and that's what makes yeah, that's what makes it so special. I I think I've said this before watching before I started watching the show and like I knew all the characters but I'd never watched Bob's Burgers that I thought they treated Tina similar similar Lurly to how they treat Meg on Family Guy and Meg, they just like, there's no like, they don't like her. They rip into oh, her. They're just so mean to her okay. all the time, you know. And I was so delighted to like learn that this, I don't know, there's something they special about it. There's something that support every child's idiosyncrasies, their quirks. Yeah. And that's like fully. If you go back and watch just like the very, couple of first episodes of Bob's, you can see that it's a little bit meaner, like it's starting to be meaner and and like weirder. And then they realize that that's not us. We're trying to conform kind of to what. And I think what's so important to remember, part of Hollywood is you have to please so many people and you're taking notes from so many people that I can now understand why maybe Lorne always set out. He wanted to set out to make a heartwarming, uplifting show, not a Simpsons. Um, so you just kind of triggered a thought to me. Maybe he was trying to appease to everyone in the first couple episodes. Because to me, when it takes off and when I tell people you should start Bob's Burgers, but maybe start here in the series to like really get them hooked. That's probably when he stepped into his most authentic creator self. Yeah, I agree with that. And especially like, you know, it's on, it started on Fox and it came out, you know, and all the cartoons that were on Fox were just kind of like these, they're hit cartoons. Like they're not like, you know, obviously Simpsons is the longest running cartoon. Um, Family Guy had been on for years and years and years. South Park. So there was that pressure, I'm sure, when new animated shows were coming out. But yes, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm so glad Bob's took a different path because it's what makes it so special. Anyway, I can go on for days. Should we get into this episode? Let's do it. Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for season six, episode 16, please? The title is Bye Bye Boo Boo. Boo Boo has gone solo breaking up our favorite band. And so, Tina's Boys For Now fan club seeks revenge on him. They're going to win his Ride a Roller Coaster with Boo Boo contest and barf all over him. Meanwhile, Bob learns the restaurant was the spot of a historical mob hit. This episode came out on May 8th, 2016. It was written by Scott Jacobson and directed by Tyree Dillahay. Tell me about it, Skylar. Thoughts. We watched this yesterday. I was in heaven watching this episode. I was immersed in everything I love about the show. I think we can call this episode the official Boys for Now follow up. Not that they haven't been featured since the first episode. I love the A story. Every joke is hysterical to me. Tina and Louise paired up. Louise trying to fight her love for Boo Boo. I love it all. What about you? Yes, I'm with you. I love the taking the lead singer of a boy band mm -hmm. and them going off on their own is such like a thing. Like it, mm -hmm. it always happens. So it's a great way to create a story around this. I love some of the vocal performances, like the, the like guest actors. I mean, we get Max Greenfield back as Boo Boo and it's always, it's, he's always funny. Yes, of course. And his songs are always funny. But also... Lauren Lapkus, who uh, you would recognize if you see her, I know you hate me saying that, but you would recognize her, uh, does Chrissy, and I love Chrissy in this episode. I love Chrissy. I love that they gave her a speech impediment. I love that she's this impassioned, like powerful leader of this um, fan club. Yeah, and it's such a small fan club. 
<laughs> uh, you mentioned the speech impediment. I was curious about it because I know that, you know, it's pretty common. Um, so I looked it up. It's called roticism and it's difficulty pronouncing R sounds in the respective languages standard pronunciation. So on fandom, did they say that the writer specifically wanted her to have this or did you just look it up? In fandom under like her, yeah. her like her character page, it does say that she has that. I don't know if it was specifically. I think it was a great character choice. She's a standout in the episode for sure. I agree. And also a standout is her dad in the boys for now. I loved him. Club meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked up who voiced the dad. Any guesses? The guy that does the librarian. Mr. Ambrose, uh, yeah. Billy Eichner. No, mm -hmm. it is Larry Murphy Jr. Stop. What yeah. a talented man. Teddy. 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 Anyway, those are just some voice actors I wanted to talk about. Both of them are so critical to the plot, too. So it just takes this episode to a whole new level. I love it so much. Let's talk about the B story. Did mm -hmm. you like the B story? I did. Not as much as I like the A story. Obviously, yeah. But that's just because Jimmy Pesto annoys me. But I did like the resolution. I did like Bob being the bigger man, kind of, and being like, he's like, I can't stand him. He's my enemy, blah, blah, blah. Or like, but look how happy he is. Let him have this. I'm going to be honest with you. In that scene where he's just like using the baguette and... It was like too long for me because I find him annoying. Yeah. And, but I love mob stuff because <laughs> I love the Sopranos basically. So I loved seeing that vintage photo of the restaurant. And I, I actually think it's just really cool history. Like I would be so cool if there was a piece of history in my restaurant. So I was really happy for Bob. That's, that's true. Maybe we should have a mob hit in our little podcast studio here. No. No. Okay. Bad idea. It would be one of us. Why? We're not in the mob. A mob hit. Anyone, a mob member can hit anyone well, no, they we'll want. We'll invite someone from the mob to come hang out here, and then we'll tell someone from the other mob. I don't know Do how Do you mobs watch work. Netflix? It's just all true crime. Oh, okay. We are going to prison. No, I, I, I'm I don't like you. I watch <laughs> Sopranos. I watch, okay. you know, we'll just invite like uh, Tony Soprano over here. Oh, oh, if only. Let's talk about the title for a minute. Bye Bye Boo Boo. Do you... Have any of idea course. what that's referencing? Tell of me. Of course. Bye Bye Birdie, my eighth grade musical. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye Bye Birdie, the musical, the movie that is about this like Elvis Presley-esque rock star mm -hmm. who has been drafted and is like having one final performance with a fan on TV, mm -hmm. something like that. That's the, right. Oh, so I didn't. I guess I didn't quite realize how similar the plot and the title aligned. Yeah, yeah. It could almost be like just Bye Bye Boo Boo is like he's a he's a big celebrity in a band and he's leaving. Yep. But yeah, the whole like doing this like roller coaster thing, this appearance with a fan. Totally. Yeah, very, very similar. The only fun fact I have that I noticed is when we were watching it yesterday was the opening credits get cut off abruptly. Oh, by the Wagstaff School News, like newsflash. Oh my god! So they make it actual look, actually look like a newsflash. Breaking flash. news. Yeah, that's hysterical. Okay, let this is a perfect segue. Do you just want to talk about some of our favorite moments? Yeah. From the A story. Yeah. I I wrote them down. I oh, was laughing out loud the whole thing. Well, first, can we just talk about Tammy and Jocelyn's reaction? Oh, please, let's talk about it. To the band breaking up. Yeah. The crying. It's so and good. trying to comfort each other. It's so good. I also love Tina's son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I laughed out loud at that, they don't overuse cursing. So when it happens, whether it's Louise or Jean or whomever, it's really funny. And this was an example of how holding back totally pays off sometimes. Yeah, I totally agree with that. One of my other favorites is actually a Jean moment, and I think I laughed out loud. I laugh out loud every time I hear this, but he's like, I think he asks his tater tots if he wants to start a fan club, and he's tater like- Tater tots back in the mix. I know. Oh, didn't I? Wasn't I just raving about them when yeah. we watched this episode? 
And he's like, in my mouth. And I just found it like, I loved it. I thought it was hysterical. Everyone shines when they need to shine on this show. Yes. I have to ask you. Mm -hmm. I personally found Tina's line when she's like, she brings Louise to Chrissy's house. And she's like, okay. It's a shoes off house. Just pretend like it's not weird. And it just hit me like that nostalgia bomb. I My house was not a shoes off house. So when I went over to friends houses that were shoes off, it was exactly how Tina explained it. It was like my equilibrium was completely thrown off. Tell me, what what's your shoes on, shoes off journey? I was also not a shoes off household. Obviously, I know it's customary in certain cultures, cultures yeah. yes. So that makes sense to me. But I think if you don't have carpeting, you don't have to be a shoes off household. <laughs> like if you've got like hardwood floors or floors that, that can't get like, that can clean pretty easily. Yeah. I don't know why you're making people have their shoes off. Yeah. We, Max and I house sat recently and it was a shoes off house with no carpet and we kept we kept messing up. Oh yeah. And I was like, right. Shh, don't tell them. I was like, Max, don't tell You've them. gone too far. Don't tell Come them. Come back. Please. <laughs> yeah, so I I she was on all the time. Yeah. Not on the furniture. Also, we've got a dog who ha- has dirt bisc- on his paws. Has dirtied up our bed or like comforter to the point of no return. That is not true. I am trying again and it's going to work this time. I'm going to keep that comforter clean. Biscuits like, I accept your challenge, lady. <laughs> he calls you lady sometimes. Lady. Yeah. Do you want to get into the end credits here? It's kind of a lot to go through, so we probably yeah, should. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's talk about just like this last moment before the end credits start is a moment between Louise and Boo Boo. She's kind of like finally like face to face with him and got him alone. And she, is this when she makes her impassioned speech about like, like what you like and it's okay I don't know. I think this might be after that. Oh, okay. Very Dave Grohl, by the way. He says he doesn't believe in guilty pleasures. Like what you like and fucking own it. I agree with that. The, mm-hmm. the older I get, the more I think, like, just embrace it mm-hmm. and don't care what anyone else thinks if you enjoy certain things. Amen. All right. On that note, take us to Louise. So here we are again, face to face. What do you mean again? Uh, you might not remember. Do you remember this? Oh, my God. How are you? <laughs> okay. Let's get you out of here. Bye, girls. Bye. Can't wait to hear the album. I'm proud of you, Louise. Ugh, he's the worst. I miss him so much. I told him not to ride your car. Keep your arms and lips inside my car. I forgot how much I love Louise's descriptions of him. She's like, he's a smelly cat. Fish lover, angel boy. Like, it's just so funny. Yeah. Everything about Louise with Boo Boo and the way that he makes her feel and the way she can't control herself, how it's written, we've talked about it before, and how Kristen Shaw delivers the performance. Yep. It makes me feel like Louise is a real girl. Yes. It's such, it's so genuine. Yeah. So we have this other this moment. It's so funny when she slaps him and he's like, oh my God, how are you? <laughs> that was just like the cap on a perfect episode. I died. I oh my God, it. how are you? And then they carry him away. Yeah, I love that he's so <laughs> he's still like a little boy. <laughs> okay, so then we get into the end credits. Tell me what's happening. All right, classic kitchen scene. Except Boo Boo is performing. I don't love this red shirt on him. I'm just going to be honest about that. And Louise is standing right behind him, and she is rocking out to his song. Yeah, Bob and Tina are still prepping burgers, but Louise is not prepping. She's looking at the camera, looking at us, and she is dancing. It's a very specific dance move. We'll talk about it. And we hear Boo Boo singing his new single, Tall Enough to Ride Your Heart. This staff. Bob's Burgers writing staff nails these songs. Do I like this more than I Love You So Much It's Scary? No. Is this hysterical and brilliant and 
great at the same time awful in the best way possible. Yes, I love it. Yeah, they they somehow managed to like nail the tone and make fun of like boy band songs, but also it's like an homage at the same time. Like it's yes. not so making so much fun that it's like it's they're actually like good songs. I know. Like we'll sing this around the house today. <laughs> yeah. For sure. With our um, shoes on. So right when I had paused it, Tina started to turn around. If you have a heart condition, consult your doctor before riding. Don't raise the safety bar when the car is in motion. Don't be scared, girl. I will protect you and so will the safety bar. Okay. <laughs> During that little like uh, speech that he gives while the music is playing, what happens? Tina has turned around. It, and the girls are doing like a snap down with their arms and then the other side snap down and then mm-hmm. linda comes and joins the snapping in the she, window she's on the other side of the window she's not yes yeah they're all snapping being his backup dancers it is giving me major skyler bye bye birdie choreography oh there's this big performance oh do you think they like the bobs creators like saw an old some old like vhs footage of you oh now it's clicking. Yeah. I, ha- I hadn't even thought about that. Wow. They're always watching footage of us when we were yeah. kids. With like the whole like shoes off thing too. How do they know about that? I don't know. How do they know we're uncomfortable? I don't know. Okay. So yeah, we're just waiting for uh, the rest of the family to kind of join in here while Boo Boo sings. Boo Boo is so short that when our like, you know, the bar that comes up on Hulu, if you're watching on your computer, <laughs> he, the gray is over him. Like, you can't even see him. He's just so tiny. Yeah. Do you think this is in, like, Louise's head? Do you think this is in Tina's head? Do you think Boo Boo came to the restaurant afterwards? I did think a private he, show? I think he came to the restaurant. He, I, From how desperate they are, I don't think his, his solo career is going that well. And from how bad that color, that specific red looks on him, he needs help. So I think he he wanted to feel adored by the Belchers. I'm I'm with you because it's so close to Wonder Wharf, and maybe he was hungry, and maybe they offered to like make him some burgers. But at the same time, Louise seems a little too composed. Way too composed, and that makes me question it. Well, I mean, of course, a a daydream of him he this is his single he's just been singing it all week so Mm -hmm. that makes complete sense too she's also not prepping so it could definitely be a daydream true it's all enough to ride your heart keep your arms and lips inside my car do not attempt to exit the car until we come to a full stop oh look they're selling a picture of us on the ride you look really scared not me i'm told enough to ride your heart keep your arms and lips inside my car Gene comes in from the su- from the right side of the screen where he normally comes in. He's not in his burger costume, but he joins into the dance moves. The snapping in the background. Bob is a little knee dipping, yeah, a little he's, head shaking. He starts shaking. to at the very end there, and so you almost think like he's not going to join in. Mm-hmm. And he turns on. He turns turns on. Uh, he turns around, kind of like at the very last mm-hmm. moment, and gets a couple of the like elbow snap mm-hmm. down moves in before. The screen goes to the yes. kind of like title cards or the end title cards. What, do you have the lyrics to read to us? Oh, of course I do. Yay. Okay. I'm going to close my eyes. Okay. I'm tall enough to ride your heart. Mm. Keep your arms and lips inside my car. And then this is what Boo Boo says. If you have a heart condition, consult your doctor before riding. <laughs> Don't raise the safety bar when the car is in motion. Don't be scared, girl. I'll protect you and so will the safety bar. <laughs> and then it goes back into... I'm tall enough to ride your heart, keep your arms and lips inside my car. And then he says, do not attempt to exit the car until we come to a full stop. Oh, look, they're selling a picture of us on the ride. You look really scared. Not me. (laughs) Then I'm tall enough to ride your heart. Keep your arms and lips inside my car. It's so good. But I also get the exact feeling of like, but your solo work isn't as good as the band's work. Uh Uh-huh. But it's so funny. Yeah. We should definitely next time we're waiting in line at Disneyland, we'll we'll need to be singing this. Oh, because of this, I was like, "What? Oh, that's so specific." <laughs> and it's like, "Oh, because we're waiting to get on a roller yeah. coaster or something." Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes a lot more sense than just singing at a place. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I I struggled with that. Tell me your thoughts about these end credits. The highlights for me, okay. the way 
this boy band brings this family together <laughs> and gets them dancing is my favorite. It, it reminds me of when you and I put on like the Spice Girls here. Which was last night. It was probably like right before we recorded this episode, honestly. Yeah. It was. Um, Skylar and I, yeah, like if we need to get pumped for something like recording or like watching television, we will brushing uh, our teeth. Brushing our teeth. We will put on some <laughs> Spice Girls and really get going. Oh, it was so much fun last night. Talk about guilty pleasure. Those that mm -hmm. they should not be a guilty pleasure. They deserve no, exactly. all the love and lis re listening. And wow, okay, sorry, I will go on a Spice Girls tangent. But what I'm saying is that it's something the family can all dance to and all enjoy. And I love seeing them all dance to Boys for Now. Me too. The last minute Bob turning around and joining is visually really lovely, but then heartwarming. I feel like this is a sequel to the haunting end credits. Which is hard because you can't top them. No, those are, you know, one of our favorites of all time. So there's just something missing here to me. I don't, is that bad to say? Do you no. feel that? No, I, I, I don't, look, spoiler alert, I don't think there are 10. Do you but, feel like there's something missing or is that just something I'm feeling? I don't know if there's something missing, mm -hmm. but I don't think there are a 10. There are a perfect mm -hmm. 10. Um, should we just get into scoring them since we're talking about that? Yeah. Okay. We score on a scale of one to ten H's at the end of Tina's uh, Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? I'll say I have mine locked in, but you can go first. I am going to give him a 9.5 H's. Okay. Um, Don't let me sway you. You had yours locked in. I, I was an 8.5. 8.5. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. There is nothing that will make me happier than the haunting end credits. And it, you know how sometimes luck is luck? Like, if those haunting credits didn't exist, this could be a 10 for me. But yeah. they do exist. True. And they don't give me that feeling. True. I, I think I, why I rated it close to a 10 is because I love hearing the Tall Enough to Ride Your Heart song. Again, that's no, true. But like, you know, the more complete version. I do too. And I think it's kind of funny that so much of the song is just him talking. Because it's yeah. like, maybe you needed the rest of the band for the singing part. <laughs> you yes. know, it's like he's. Okay. You fine. don't have to. You nine. Don't, no, 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 you nine. don't have to. Okay. Okay. Here's why it's a nine for me. I love any boy band songs these writers write. Yeah. I will put them on a pedestal and build a cult around them. Yeah. I love them so much. It's almost a bummer we didn't get. Any boys for now in the movie now. Yeah, damn. But I will say that I would have scored lower if it was just Louise dancing with Boo Boo. It made me so happy again to see the family slowly joining in. And then at the very end, I was very worried. I was like, oh, Bob, come on. You got to get in on this. And then I when he starts moving, was. I was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. So Aww. that's why. Yeah. Okay. I feel good. 9.25. We're good. Cool. It's like Boo Boo's a 9.25. And boys for now is a 10. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. We don't um, make the rules. Just kind of like how Justin Timberlake versus NSYNC or well. uh, Harry Styles. <laughs> this is not working this out. Is Harry not Styles is <laughs> for One Direction. This is not working out. I wanted it to. Yeah. Those are the end credits to Bye Bye Boo Boo. We are approaching our 100th episode. Oh my gosh, what should we do? I think we should figure out something special. Keep listening, keep paying attention to our Instagram and our Twitter. You know we love to spoil y'all. Yeah, at Bob's Credits, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Subscribe to our Patreon. Oh yeah, we haven't mentioned that. We have movie Easter eggs up there. It's a great conversation about the movie. Yeah, lots of We have of our good first thoughts about the movie. We have lots of fun episodes up there mm -hmm. right now. Plus you get access to our Discord and you can join our community there where we're constantly talking about Bob's Burgers and some other stuff on the side. Anything else you want to say to everyone before we get out of here? I'm so upset with myself because Gene said something. It, he was like something and something. And I was like, oh, I should sign off with that. But I totally forgot what it is. So I'll say stay happy and slappy. I love staying slappy. Or and toddy happy. and barfy. Toddy and barfy? I just love tater tots and oh, there was Totty. I thought it was, I was, I was like, who's Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Todd is so a name they would give one of the dads on this. There series. is a Todd on the show, isn't there? There is. Uh, mm. 
Uh, I'll fade this out. I think it's time for lunch. Yeah. I wish we had dated.